Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. Well, good morning and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. We are so glad that you have joined us here on this Labor Day weekend. Um, thank you for, for tuning in and for joining us. And we look forward to a special time together this morning. My name is Michael Cromwell and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors. And it's my joy uh, to be able to share with you this morning. Uh, so I invite you to join me as we pray together. God, we thank you for the gift of this day and for the season. And we pray, God, that this would be a moment, a, a time in which uh, focuses on you, uh, that you would move in incredible ways. And God, that we would be changed as a result of meeting you and seeing you face to face. Thank you for your goodness in our lives. We give you ourselves now. And I pray for more of you and for less of me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I know that you are super excited to hear the annual Labor Day weekend sermon. It's, it's one of everybody's favorites, right? Only a, a close second probably to the Christmas story, Christmas Eve. But, you know, Labor, Labor Day is one of those interesting holidays that we celebrate. A lot of the times we don't even know why we're celebrating it, but, but we do. Um, it gives us a day off, right? A day off of work, so we enjoy that. Well, I'd like to share with you just a really brief history about Labor Day, um, how it came to be and the fact that we celebrate it now. In the late 1800s, in the rise and the height of the Industrial Revolution, many workers worked 12-hour days for seven days a week. And they barely earned enough money to, to get by, to, to pay their bills and to support their families. In addition to that, children often worked, young children were workers as well, and only got paid a fraction of the cost of what adults made. And then on top of this, much of the time, the conditions in which they were working weren't safe. Uh, many times unsanitary. So because of these conditions, labor unions started forming uh, because they wanted to serve as a voice for those workers who were suffering under these conditions. And these unions became vocal and began organizing strikes and rallies in hopes of advocating for better working conditions uh, for the workers of this time. And they wanted higher pay as well. Well, some of these rallies even turned violent, as you could imagine. And according to the History Channel, it says on September the 5th, 1882, 10,000 workers took unpaid time off to march from City Hall to Union Square in New York City, holding the first Labor Day parade in United States history. Well, because of several major riots and strikes of these, these worker unions, President Grover Cleveland proposed a bill that would make Labor Day a national holiday in 1894. And the bill was signed into law in June later that year. 
It brought recognition and, and the, the rise and the understanding of the unfair working environment of that day. Well, obviously, in a, a large part, things have changed over the years, fortunately. Um, but Labor Day really is now more of an occasion to, for some to mark the end of the summer, uh, to enjoy a day off from work, or perhaps even spend some time vacationing with family and friends. Well, on this Labor Day weekend, um, I want to ask you a question. Do you remember your first job? I, I remember vividly my first job. I, I can still see certain sights very clearly in my mind. Uh, there are times I might even smell something and it takes me back uh, to my first job. And specifically, I can remember how much I did not like my first job at all. You see, when I was 15 years old, uh, my dad informed me that he found me a job. Well, the interesting thing was I'd never remembered looking for a job, but he found me one anyway. He said it would do me some good and it would teach me some responsibility and it would show me what hard work really is. And it would put some extra spending money in my pocket. So 15 year old me, I liked that part of it, a little bit of extra money. Well, my first job was working on an assembly line at a Hallmark bag factory. You know the little bags you put gifts in to give to people? Yeah, I, I helped to make those bags. What I did was I would take, take a bag and then I would uh, manually put the handles on that bag and then I would slap a UPC label on the bag. Well, I would take those gift bags and I would put them into larger bags for packaging. Then I would take these larger bags and I would put them into a cardboard box. Then I would seal those cardboard boxes up and then I would put those cord cardboard boxes into larger cardboard boxes and eventually to be shipped off on a truck. I did that for, it, it was at least eight hours a day in the summer in the heat of Louisiana with no air conditioning whatsoever. I was thrilled my dad found me this job, as you can imagine. Well, oddly enough, on my first day, I realized that my friend John, his dad found him the same job. We happened to show up at the same time to work in the same job without really knowing it was in our future ahead of time. Well, I, I was 15 and most of the people who worked there were at least twice my age. So I didn't have a lot in common with most of the people that worked there. But, you know, I, I tried to put myself out there to, to be nice, to be friendly, to, to, to meet others. And for a natural introvert, that was, that was a difficult thing to do. But what I realized that these were some of the rudest people I had ever encountered in my entire life. I would say hi, try to interact with them and oftentimes would not even get an answer. In fact, a lot of the times they wouldn't even look up and acknowledge my presence there. So after several days of, of trying to engage with these other workers, I, I shared my frustration with my dad. I, I, I said, you know, I just, people aren't nice there. I'm trying to engage, but they're, they're not engaging back. And that's when my dad said, oh, um, I think I forgot to tell you something. The majority of the people that work in this factory, well, they're deaf. They can't hear you. That's why. Well, that would have been something great to know before I started working there, not afterwards. Well, I, I share this story to to share a learning experience with you and perhaps one that you've learned in some of your experiences. And it is the, the experience of, of the value of working hard. You know, no, no matter what we do for a living, there's value in working hard and giving it your all. You know, while I, I didn't love that job and I certainly didn't love working on an assembly line, I, I worked hard. I wanted to do my best and I learned that there truly is value in hard work. And that experience has helped to shape much of who I am today. 
and my work ethic today as well. You see, it, it helped me understand that even, um, even though someone may have something what others may consider a disability, that people are capable of so much when they put their mind to it and when they put effort forth. You know, I learned so much from those employees in the several years that I ended up working for that company. You know, we worked hard to to understand one another as much as we could. Even though there was a barrier between us, we worked hard to overcome those barriers uh, for me to be able to, to learn and to have such respect for those that I worked with. Well, This morning's scripture has a few things to say about this concept of of work, and I want to share it with you now. So our scripture comes to us from the New Testament book of Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 17, and then I'll jump ahead to verses 23 through 24. Hear these words from the Apostle Paul. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any, any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. It's the word of God for the people of God. And we give thanks to God. You know, after after reading and studying this passage for a, a bit, there's a concept that really jumped out at me and has convicted me as of late. Verse 17 says, and whatever you do, whether in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. You see, everything we do, whatever you do, should be an act of thanksgiving to God as an expression of our love for Jesus. You know, we often think about our work, what we do for a living as a profession, as a means to make a living, to provide for our families, to pay bills, to to prepare us for retirement. And of course, the list goes on. But while these are, are true and great reasons to work, have you ever thought about your work as an act of gratitude to God? Are we grateful to God? for the work that God allows us to do, whether we're paid for it or not. Now, I know some of you may be saying, Michael, look, I'm I'm, I'm retired. I've done my time. You know, I'm not working anymore. Well, in the kingdom of God, there's always work to be done. And if you're a student, you might be saying, you know, I don't work. I'm in school. Well, school is your work right now. You can work for God in school and in the church as well. Now, I realize it's not real common for students to be grateful for the ability to go to school uh, unless you travel to other countries and you see what a privilege education really is in so many other countries. But it's the ability to, to be able to grow and learn as we are part of the education system. But if we take this step one, take this one step further, we know that in the Christian faith and in the Christian tradition, our works, our good works, our acts that we do or offer for the kingdom. Now, these works aren't necessarily things that we are paid to do, although some of us have the luxury of doing that. 
They are works that display our devotion to God. You see, when, when we serve God by, by working, by, by laboring for God, we're not doing God a favor. You ever thought that, that if I do this, then I'm going to do God a favor? You see, God allows us to work for the kingdom's sake. God doesn't need us, but God wants us. So we should approach our work with gratitude because of the sheer fact that God wants us to work for him. You know, uh, James, um, in the book of James in the New Testament, he talks about the connection between faith and works. This is what he says in James chapter 2, verse 18. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Well, show me your faith apart from your works and I will show you my faith by my works. In James chapter two, just a couple of verses later in verse 26, he says, for as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. You know, one of the things that drew me to the United Methodist tradition is this focus on both and. Now, let me unpack that just a little bit here. What I mean by that is we have a focus on both personal holiness and social holiness. It's necessary that I cultivate a life of of, of devotion to God and my spiritual walk. It's vital that I spend time with God every day, uh, reading and studying scripture and, and praying. But we're also called to live a life of faith that's lived out in our works. It's our faith in action. Did you know that in the, the Methodist tradition that we have a set of articles of religion found in our book of discipline. And these articles, well, they, they help to define what we believe about certain theological issues. Concerning good works, here's what Article 10 has to say. Although good works, which are the fruits of faith, and follow after justification cannot put away our sins and endure the severity of God's judgment, yet are they pleasing and acceptable to God in Christ and spring out of a true and lively faith insomuch that by them a lively faith may be as evidently known as a tree is discerned by its fruit." a pretty visual image of, of our works that are put forth as a result of our faith. So it begs the question, how are we living out our faith? Maybe another way to ask it is, how are we practicing our faith through our work? Whether it's what we do for a profession or through our Christian works in the church and in the community. The world needs to see our faith in action. So when people look at you and when they look at me, do they think that's a person of deep faith who's living it out in his or her life? Or do, or do we separate the various parts of our lives? You know, my, the Christian part of my life, that's reserved for Sundays. Um, in church or watching online. But there's no really place for it in the rest of my life, whether it's at home or at work or at school. Well, I, I don't know about you, but I, I want people to look at me and, and my works that I'm doing and think, you know, he's doing something for something or someone greater than himself. Whatever we do, whatever you do, let's commit our work to the Lord for his glory and his kingdom's sake. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58 says, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Warren Wearsby, a 
theologian and author, he states, because of the assurance of Christ's victory over death, we know that nothing we do for him will ever be wasted or lost. We can be steadfast in our services, unmovable in suffering, abounding in ministry to others because we know our labor is not in vain. Our labor is not in vain. Whether you see the fruits of your labor or not, if you're doing it for the glory of God to, to build his kingdom, your work is not in vain. You know, right here at RUMC, did you know that there, there are a plethora of ways to, to work, to labor for God? You know, if you're not already plugged in, I, I would encourage you to find a way to get plugged in. Um, as a matter of fact, below the screen, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see a connect card. You can fill that out and we can help you find a place to get plugged in. Whether it's a, a children's Sunday school teacher, it could be a member of the choir, it could be an usher, a greeter, a member of our audio and video team, uh, maybe a member of our missions ministry or a youth small group leader. There are so many opportunities for us to be able to work for God, to, to share our love and our appreciation for God. So I encourage you to check that out if you haven't already. You know, um, today I think it's important for us to, to take some time to give thanks to God for the fact that we are allowed to work for God and to work for God's kingdom and to remember that we do not labor in vain because we're not the only ones working here. God is working too. God is working in you and through you. And God's Holy Spirit wants to expand the kingdom on this earth through you and through me. Christ's very presence is us. His church. You know, when, when I began working my first job, I, I couldn't stand the work. It was the same thing over and over, and it got so old very fast, but, but I wanted to do a good job. I, I learned to tolerate the work, and I learned to enjoy the people that I worked with. You know, I I ended up working several years with that company, even into college. I worked for that same company. But you know, I wanted to work hard. And do you know why I wanted to work hard? It's because I wanted to please my father. I wanted him to know that I appreciated him and that I loved him. Well, may that be our goal in the works of our faith, our faith in action. So whatever you do, whatever you do, whether it's what you do for a living or what you do for God's kingdom in the church, in the community, let's strive for the same goal, to please God and to give thanks for Jesus Christ. Happy Labor Day. Let's pray together. God, we thank you that you have called us, called us to join you in work, all for your glory's sake. And we, we pray, God, that you will use us to make a difference in this world. And God, we're grateful that even though you don't need us, you want us. You allow us to work for you and for the benefit of humankind. And God, we thank you that you are allowing us to be, be a part of work that's restoring goodness to this world. So Lord, we pray that you will guide our steps as we serve you, or that you will help us determine how and where and when to serve, that our work might be done for your sake and that our work may, may not be in vain. But God, that you would take what we offer, you would multiply it and do incredible things. 
may we remember on this Labor Day weekend the joy and the gift and the privilege that it is to work for you and for others. Be glorified in our lives as you work in us and through us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, Just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, Thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi. Thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that He made us in His image, and what the Bible tells us is that His image is an us, is an our, When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, He made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to Him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.